Today is a great feast for us Franciscans, our Holy Mother St. Clair, a counterpart to St. Francis, the image, the, or it was called an icon of Our Lady, St. Clair was. And she entered, she started her order at the age of 18 years old to, and started this great order of the poor Clares on a solid foundation of poverty and love for Christ and contempt for the things of this world because she was from a wealthy family. She was pretty and she could have, she had several suitors for marriage and yet she, after she heard the words of St. Francis in the Cathedral of Assisi during Lent, she reflected long and hard on his words about the contempt, contempt for the world and how this, the world's passing pleasures are not to be set our hearts on how we should live for the love of Jesus Christ and set our focus on, on him and to have contempt, a real contempt for the things of this world that, that can lead us astray and can lead us into sin and draw us away from the love of Jesus Christ. These words that really struck the hearts of St. Saint, Saint Clair uh, at that particular day in the cathedral and she heard him preach several times after that, and then she conferred with St. Francis about what she should do with her life, because she was drawn to follow a, a similar path as St. Francis, and, but she knew that she couldn't, she couldn't leave home with the permission of her father, so St. Francis arranged things with her that she should come secretly, and on the night of uh, Palm Sunday during that Lent to go to Little Portiuncular, Our Lady Saint Mary of the Angels, and there Saint Francis cut her hair off. Which she was she went with her elderly relative, and Saint Francis was there with some of her his friars and with lighted candles at night, and cut her hair off and gave her a penitential garb and a, a cord to wear, and she took off her uh, expensive clothing that she had worn for the Mass of, of uh, Palm Sunday. And she adopted that life of poverty and she was put in a, a Benedictine convent for the time being until her relatives calmed down and let her do what she wanted to do. And then St. Francis found a, a convent of San Damiano where she could stay with her sister, St. Agnes, who joined her some weeks later. And many other noble women joined St. Clair and put aside their worldly concerns to live a life of love for Jesus and to live a life of seclusion in, in the cloister and a real abject poverty, which she embraced. And she received permission from the Holy Father to embrace a life of poverty, which was not only individual but also communitary. So even the community didn't have any any property. And this is something that almost no, almost no uh, female convent would, uh, would adopt this kind of communitary poverty. Later on, the poor Clares did, did mitigate that, but St. Clair uh, received that privilege from the Holy Father herself that the convent in San Damiano would, would have that, uh, that kind of uh, radical poverty in common as well as individual. So she really, really embraced this love for poverty and she really was an image of this lady poverty that St. Francis was always preaching and how he loved lady poverty because Jesus embraced it, Our Lady embraced it. And she was a real image, an icon of Our Lady, who was really the queen of, queen of poverty, the queen of living out that virtue of detachment, total detachment from the things of this world, which are corruptible, which draw our hearts away from Jesus and love of God, which lead us into sin and lead us to, to live a life, of, a wasted life, where we set our hearts on riches and wealth and 
living for the things of this world, which are really rubbish, as the first, as the first reading we read today was to St. Saint, Saint Paul, this is all rubbish in the light of the love of Jesus Christ. And she is a real, real example of that contempt for the world, and we need to develop that contempt for the things of this world that take us away from God, and that, it, that make us waste our time and waste our resources and waste, waste our efforts on the, for the things of this world which are passing and which do not bear fruit for e eternal life in many cases unless we are using the things of this world for the love of God and to serve him and to, and to do his will, but not to set our hearts on the things of this world in themselves, but to realize the, the danger and the harm that setting our hearts on worldly things can do. So we should live a life of simplicity, detachment from the things of this world. And this is what St. Clair really underlined in her, her, her life of, of uh, renouncing the riches and wealth that she could have had and the worldly things she could have had and embracing a life of union with Jesus Christ in the contemplative in the contemplative life. But she, she lived and she also suffered there because she spent 30 years in illness, bedridden for 30 years, practically her whole religious life. And she offered it up all for conversion of souls and to unite herself closer and closer to Jesus Christ. And it was at the end of her life on her deathbed that Our Lady appeared to her with a, with a whole line of virgins and came to greet her and to take her to heaven. But before she did, Our Lady bent down to put her face close to St. Clair and the sister that saw this, saw that both their faces looked exactly the same because St. Clair had really imaged the life of Our Lady. She had really reached that perfection of, Im of imitation of, of Our Lady in her poverty, her love for Jesus Christ, her total union with with God. And so let us follow her example. Let us capture that contempt for the world, but in a positive way, that love and union for Jesus and detachment from the things of this world and to look, to really look at the things of this world with a certain contempt because they, it is corruptible, not satisfying to our hearts and that we were made for, we were made for the things of heaven, eternal things which last forever and are far greater a joy to us. Oh, oh.